What's up, guys? Uh, welcome to episode six of the Neutral Zone Rewind. I'm Terrence Checkett, filling in once again for Mitch and Ryland. Um, so we just have one tournament to recap from this past weekend. Uh, it was the Happy Valley Throwdown, hosted by Penn State. Um, we had three East Coast teams and two Ohio teams uh, face off. And we had a lot of great matchups and a lot of confusing results. Um, so we'll go team by team and uh, look at some results and top performers. Um, starting off with the number one team in the country right now, Ohio State. Um, they won a close game over JMU, 2-1. to one. Um, That was the first, game, first slate of the day. Um, and they were able to survive after getting a first half lead. Um, next, they faced uh, Penn State. Um, that was an incredible game. Uh, it ended with Penn State winning in overtime. Uh, it was a back and forth game with a lot of emotions. Um, but Penn State came out on top in that one handing OSU their first loss of the season. Um, OSU also beat uh, UVA pretty handedly. Final score in that one was 4-2. to two. Um, Notably, the Buckeyes were without uh, Nick Kemmer, who is one of the best players in the entire country. Um, so definitely down an arm for them. But uh, guys like Derek Kemper, Alden Prohaska, household names, uh, were able to lead them to a respectable 2-1 and one record. Um, definitely not the results they were looking for. They probably wanted to go 3-0, and but 2-1 um, and one ain't bad, especially without arguably your best player. Um, also, we had uh, rookie Colson Bunch for the Buckeyes had a great day, as well as President Ethan Lemkul. Uh, moving on to JMU, uh, the Dukes, as I just said, lost a close one in their first game to OSU, um, but then they turned around and beat Penn State. Um, that was the first matchup for probably the top two teams in the East region this year, and JMU uh, kind of retained their dominance in that head-to-head -head matchup um, that they've displayed the last few years. And then later in the day, JMU um, had a comfortable win against Kent. They won 5-1. to one. Um, Nick Foss, as anybody that's played JMU knows, uh, catches just about everything, and he was doing that all day. Uh, Trent Schaefer is an MVP candidate, and um, he also had a great day. Um, and then a name uh, from JMU that's kind of been, well, making a name for himself so far this year is Joel Froyan. Um, he's a great arm, and it was reported that he had... Uh, a combination of throwing, blocking, and catching uh, on display at this tournament. So definitely look for him to keep uh, solidifying himself as a uh, an All-American contender. Um, moving on to Penn State, um, Nittany Lions had an up-and-down day for sure. They lost to JMU 3-5, uh, to five, as I said, um, but then they went on and beat the number one team in the country in Ohio State in overtime. Um, so... Kind of your average uh, Penn State performance, up and down. Some games they look incredible. Some games they don't even look like a top 10 team. So um, it's going to be on their leadership to get them under control and just start to deliver some level of consistency. Um, Hunter Stewart made his season debut this year after missing Pink out with a hamstring injury, and he looked uh, just as good as he did last year, if not better. So we'll definitely be looking him looking at him as... Uh, an All-American hopeful, probably lock at this point, and MVP hopeful for sure. Um, other performers for Penn State were Cloud Tapia Manon, who in my opinion has taken his game to another level this year. Um, and then some rookies got the chance to um, make their NCDA debuts after some injuries to the Penn State lineup. Names like Curtis Rabbiton, John Hartley, Ben Marines, and Jack Sawyer. Um, all played a big role in uh, their win against OSU um, and their game against uh, JMU. So Penn State, solid day, hosted, um, and they'll be looking to carry this momentum, uh, especially with that win over OSU into their next tournament. Uh, Kent State, this is uh, their third tournament of the year. They made the trip out. Um, made the trip out to PSU, and uh, they actually played four games. Um, they won a close one against UVA. It was a pretty heated match. I would recommend watching that. Um, they beat PSU B team handedly. 
and then uh, they lost to JMU and PSU um, pretty pretty uh, easily. I would say the Penn State game was or the JMU game was a little closer than the score might indicate. I heard Kent was in the first few points and just lost close ones. Um, so the Golden Flashes are obviously not the team that they were last year. We all know that by then, but uh, we all know that by now. But um, Definitely going to look for them to start, uh, start to deliver more consistent results against the best teams. Um, so, yeah, uh, top performers for Kent were rookie J.J. Oldenburg and, um, what is and Mitch uh, Gainwell. Yeah, Mitch Gainwell. Um, so Kent State with a solid day. Um, definitely a big feel-good win for them against UVA. Uh, that was a... Nationals rematch from last year in which UVA won a close one. Um, so definitely feel feels good for the Golden Flashes to get that one back. Uh, and then the last team uh, to recap is UVA. Uh, they won handedly against Penn State. Or not Penn State, Penn State B team. 7-0. Uh, uh, lost a super close game to Kent that I just talked about. And then... Uh, actually had a pretty impressive performance against OSU, only losing 4-2, to two, and they were in a lot of those points. Um, apart from President Wyndham White, who is uh, definitely one of their best players, uh, some notable guys from that team were Cam Penn, um, who's starting to uh, make a name for himself as one of the top arms in the league, as well as Grady Holmes, who um, was making catch after catch, as is reported. Um, so yeah, moving on to this weekend, we have two tournaments, um, first of which is going to be hosted by, um, hosted by UWP, um, it's going to be called the Pioneer Classic, it's the fourth iteration of that tournament, and we have some very interesting matchups there, um, we have top two teams playing there are going to be, uh, UNL, Nebraska, and UWP, and um, they'll face off in the first slate of the games at 10. And then the other two teams are CUW and Illinois, both teams making their season debut. Um, they both made their NCDA debut last year, so um, definitely going to be interesting to see what kind of recruiting they did and um, to see what they're going to bring to the table in their second season. So they'll get a chance to face off against each other as well as... Um, both of uh, UNL and UWP. So a lot of good matchups there. Uh, we'll be looking for All-American hopeful slash lock Caleb Newell to make his debut for UWP and definitely change the way that they play. Um, that'll be a good test for them, UNL. Um, so yeah, a lot of good matchups there. Uh, there's also rumored to be an NCDA team or alumni team that's going to play a couple games too, so that'll be fun to watch. Um, that'll be streamed on uh, UWP Dodgeball YouTube as well as NCDA Dodgeball YouTube. Um, and reminder that when you see that uh, schedule graphic, those times are in central time, so make sure to do those calculations. Um, and then the other tournament we have this weekend is uh, Miami, uh, the Red Hawk Classic, sorry, which is hosted by um, University of Miami. And... Um, we have five Ohio region teams coming there. Um, it's going to be OU, UC, Miami, Akron, and Bowling Green. So uh, five teams that are all very competitive in the Ohio region and I would say would all claim to be right around the same area as those teams. So there's going to be a lot of interesting matchups. I think every single matchup on the schedule has the potential to be a good game, which is always something you want in a tournament. Um, specifically, we're going to get uh, matchups like OU versus Miami. Um, we will have UC versus Akron, uh, OU versus Akron, um, Bowling Green versus Miami. So there's going to be a lot of good matchups there. Um, so yeah, we'll look for those teams to uh, kind of separate themselves into tiers in the Ohio region. It's been kind of hard to tell so far this year where teams stack up. Uh, we kind of know OSU has established themselves at the top, um, but the pecking order is definitely still up for grabs, so we'll see teams make a run at that this weekend. Uh, those games also start at 10, and those will be on uh, Miami University Dodgeball YouTube and uh, NCDA.
YouTube. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, make sure you guys turn, uh, tune in this Saturday to those two tournaments. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. All right, bye.